Hey, what is up guys? Marcy here, back to do another video. And today I've got two games on R20C, the most recent of patches I've released. This is most likely gonna be the last iteration of R20. I spent a lot of time on this. The reason I haven't been posting many videos of games is because I've been working really hard on this patch. Uh, it has taken its toll on me, quite frankly. I didn't have much motivation to play for several days. But uh, I found some motivation to play, and I had some really fun games. I played versus Futurama, I played versus Senna, I played even against Bycrush, but I wasn't in the best shape. But that's to be expected. So what is so special about this uh, new iteration of the patch? Well, there is the return of the ranked 1 versus 1 ladder. There was much stuff done behind the scenes to convince the Revora admins that uh, we have a compatible patch for the ladder once more. The reason why that was removed seven years ago was because Predator, uh, the map maker, insisted that his maps could not be played in the patch, uh, in ranks specifically. And there was a lot of controversy surrounding that, but since then we've had many map makers arise like Technique, Desolator Trooper, Zypher Bullet, uh, Aquatech, and several others. I apologize if I don't mention your names, but yeah, the map making community is vibrant. Des has been doing a fantastic job of maps. In fact, the next game you'll see after this one will be of the uh, Desolator Trooper map, one of them. One of the um, biggest changes in R20C is the fact that Harvest is never bugged now. So the bugs that plagued Harvest for 15 years has been fixed took iterations, a few iterations of R20 to fix it. Even during the beta test, I was experimenting and trying to resolve the bug through the process of elimination. But we finally did fix the bugs. Uh, it took a lot of persistence, effort and time. Uh, there's no more bugs of harvests anymore in Kane's Wrath, which is just fantastic. It's a pity it came a little late, but better late than never, as well as the ladder. There's some other awesome things in this R20 update, which you can find in the description down below. I'll have a link to all the changes. Uh, I've also updated the 4K mods. There's an option in the alternate 4K mod to enable this decal that you're seeing on my MRTs for the War Factory MRTs and rig and stuff like that. That's an option you must tick in the installer if you want that. I've improved several textures as well. But yeah, this game here, as you can see, I'm going for Mutant Marauders. You guys are probably wondering, what is this game about, Leaf? Well, it's a game where I'm going for Mutants versus Skrin. Stand at the start wondering why I did this, because uh, it's very odd. But versus Skrin, I feel like it's really good because it kills Gunwalkers, it kills Seekers. The only thing it doesn't deal with is Devour attacks. And that's why I sold my War Factory off, and I'm going for double airfield straight away before my expansion. So I'm going to go ahead and build a second airfield and start queuing these orcas. The reason I'm building two airfields is so I can speed up my production of these orcas because I need several of them out on the map. And while this is happening, I'm going to thin out this uh, anti-air of Senna. He's going for those dev tanks. He has to deal with these MRTs. Devour tanks getting shut up there. Seekers are no match for these MRTs. Mutants doing so much damage. As you can see, the gun damage output by those Mutant Marauders is crazy. That has not been buffed or changed in R20, though. Uh, years ago, some patch in R1.2 Plus may have changed the stats of Mutant Marauders. The only thing I did was fix the um, heroic tracer effects. So if Mutant Marauders are heroic, you can see the red bullets. It also displays the rank on the infantry unit itself now before there was no indication of whether or not the mutant marauder was veteran elite or heroic so i've got these mutant mrts on the ground i've got eight orcas overhead they don't have hard points though they're not particularly tanky so it's hard getting value out of hard points for that reason nonetheless they are moving forward unscouted and my target is those devour tanks. I'm going to go ahead and try and snipe these dev tanks. If I can kill both of them, then the gunwalkers does not concern me. A photon cannon gets dropped. 
both of the dev tanks gets destroyed and that's exactly what I wanted to see. I placed down a mine drop and that dev tank gets sniped down immediately. The decal on my MRTs is um, unique to 1.02 plus R20. I did modify and remake the decal in 4K resolution with a GDI logo just so it's not displaying that nod logo which kind of looks weird when using APCs and MRTs. Couple of storm runners in my base. I've got no means of killing them except mutant marauders from my mutant holes. I'm going to start making a couple of those. It really is my only option. I summoned in the bloodhounds. I'll get two veteran pitbulls. The wolverines don't shoot aircraft, but those pitbulls will scare off those uh, storm runners. And what I can do is put these mutants inside of the harvesters. So steel talons and the mutants they synergize really well together. Devourer tank will go down, and yeah, these mutants are just doing so much. It's basically the mutants alone that are causing the most damage. All the orcas do, unfortunately, get destroyed by those storm riders. I also lost several of my harvesters, so this is not too good for me. I'm taking a lot of damage here. Despite those wins I got, uh, Senna is recovering. He is killing my harvesters, and this is problematic for me. I'm starting to spam out this anti air. But uh, the GIA battery is pretty pathetic. I do have mutant marauders. I'm going to put them inside of these heavy harvesters. It will conceal them there. And Senna may fly into those harvesters expecting to kill them. When in fact the harvesters have those mutants inside and will fire back. They deal sizable DPS to those storm riders. Moving into his base once more for another round. Storm rider gets destroyed there by the harvester. The DPS against vehicles such as harvesters is low, but the self-repair of the MRT is what makes this push very powerful. And I know that it limits his options to just devourer tanks. If he was trying 59, he could go for cultists. Uh, though that's still a bit risky, isn't it, against those mutants, which have very big range. Of course, a storm column would be the hard counter. Even a couple of mecha piece perhaps would do the trick. But uh, the Orcas can deal with one tripod. The Orcas can also sweep in and take out a Storm Column. So it, you need more than one of those things to counter this. I'm going to go back once again for Orcas. Just because I'm so far away from getting my Tier 3 out. And I don't feel like I have the time to upgrade railguns and go Mammoth Tanks. That's very slow. I need to remain on the offensive. Harvesters will be safe, and I'm going to move out with my MCB to the expansion. Tier 3 is out, tripod comes out, I don't want to engage into that. I'm still Talons. So what I can do at this point is I can summon in the V-35s. Storm Riders go into my base, they'll find several of those Harvesters were garrisoned up. One of the Storm Riders falls, the others will be forced to retreat, so I lost a Harvester there, but that could have been way worse. And now I've got these MRTs with mutinies. And those move incredibly quickly, and when Storm Riders fly through those MRTs, they'll get absolutely shredded by those mutants. Eight Orcas, once again, were rebuilt. Now I'm going for hard points, just because it may come in handy. Uh, you never know, maybe there'll be minimal air resistance like here. And this will be a tech snipe for me, so that's just what I wanted to see. A double A battery comes down, and the Storm Riders try to chase, but with the aid of those mutant MRT V-35s, I'll be able to cover the retreat of those Orcas. Orcas will go back to base for refueling and rearming. Senate doesn't know what to do versus this. It's quite an orthodox strategy. This is why I am showcasing this. It's a very unusual thing indeed. This is Tournament LA, a classic technique made map. Speaking of technique, I have been speaking to him a lot lately. Nothing uh, in regards to Kane's draft, unfortunately, but uh, he's a chill guy. Nice uh, speaking to him or chatting with him on Discord. He's much into Diablo, Diablo 4. Uh, he like, somewhat piqued my interest in that game, though I looked at the price tag and I was like, mm, I think I'll hold off for a little bit. It's a bit expensive for the time being, in, in my opinion, at least. 
I guess if you're a die-hard Diablo fan, you would have no issue paying that much. I think if Kane's Wrath were to have an official remaster with servers and it guaranteed a larger player base, then would you guys pay $80? I've... Man, I don't know. I, even even in this case, I I don't think I would because I did the patch for R20 and it's unlikely that EA will do a better job with the balance. Because uh, it just it just took many years to get to this point. But uh, obviously, the thing with an official remaster is it will draw in a lot more players, and that's really the thing that mods will never accomplish. You'll never get players coming back to play a mod as much as you would uh, an official product. Storm Rider sweep in, but those MRTs are just right there to intercept. And I'm building up my forces. I'm going for Titans now. Uh, read an interview with, uh, I actually saw an interview from a video which wasn't supposed to be published on Kane's Wrath and Jim Vassella the developer for one of the lead developers for Kane Draft said that they never intended for Titans to be in this expansion pack. The only reason they put them there was because it was requested by the fans, but they never intended for Steel Talons to exist as a sub faction. So that's uh, crazy. May have explained why they were so watered down in the end. Nonetheless, they are a decent faction in R20. Their units function well. They're all about armor, they're about fire supremacy. Their Mars are a little lacking though they don't really have access to sonic technology so that makes sense. It's a bit weak. I'm gonna evac all my MRTs and one of those meme marauders has gone all the way to the heroic status. I got these orcas overhead, but against the swarm of gun walkers and plasma missile batteries, it's foolish of me to go in there. I'd lose all my orcas for no reason. There's ample titans there to deal with the tripods that he has built. And because the uh, MRTs and orcas consume so much attention, the ground forces to deal with the titans, to deal with these mutants on the ground, is now not enough. The titans will crush the tripods which d can't deal with titans over buildings because titans do shoot over them. The tri titans can form a tighter formation in R20 now because the uh, collision box was altered and that's going to be GG and I hope you all enjoyed that game there with the mutant marauders. I'm going to go into the game number two which I also fancy a lot so stay tuned for that. Alright guys, and I am back with game number two, which brings us to Toxicity. The map I mentioned in the first game, made by Desolated Trooper. This is honestly the best map that he has made. I like this map a lot. The terrain looks and it does feel like an EA map, doesn't it? It reminds me a lot of Tournament Decision. It has the same palette of textures as Tournament Decision. The lighting, I believe, is similar. So this is located in a say in the same uh, geographical location as torment decision a beautifully made map very well crafted uh, desolate trooper has um, came a long way when it has come to map making now this game is exciting this game is fun and i'm starting things off here with a new build order i don't think i've demonstrated this on my channel but it does work and it involves going for disciples after my first refinery. The reason I go for it after my first refinery is because you don't need it right away. I'm somewhat making a risk here because if my opponent is not, it's going to be a lot harder for this to work. However, it can also work because disciples are very good at dealing with rushes. My opponent though will be GDI. Instead of a refinery, it's actually quicker to go for, instead of a war factory, it's actually quicker to build a second refinery after your shrine. Not only that, but if you build a a war factory, then you won't be able to place it and have it have power because the war factory consumes uh, too much power, and you'd have to wait until your upgrade, the Black Disciples, is finished before you can even power the war factory. So it makes more sense building a refinery after a refinery. And I'm gonna get that two and two eco. 
and then after I build the war factory. So this is gonna give me the most amount of income whilst executing this strategy. This will force Senna to build Wolverines because he has steel talons. MCV was deployed to the expansion. I'm gonna get out of the radius of that so I don't lose my stuff to the watchtower. I'm going to move my forces around the place. I've got three rocket squads there and two cabals. That can deal with one or two Wolverines. Those are full cabals as well. I made them from the hand of Nod. A lot of people, since the cabal draft change, uh, haven't been making them from the hand of Nod. But it's definitely worth it. The full squad is way better. And the two cabals I got from selling the hand of Nod and Secret Shrine. I sent to my opponent's second spike, and this was also the first time that I've ever had this happen in Kane Draft. I used the power signature scan, and I saw the upgrade on the power plant there, which gave me scouting intel. Usually, if you see no refinery and an upgrade on a power plant, that could mean only one thing, that there's aircraft coming. So I used the power signature scan to get some vital scouting intel. I don't think that has ever occurred in a game of Kane Draft, or if it did, it would certainly not be possible to view it from a third person perspective, such as a caster like Cyber. Wolverine goes to its death, and I was thinking maybe he built that just for a hammerhead to clean up my forces, but instead he's going for orcas which completely took me by surprise. I'm taking up to tier three behind this. So this game is just absolutely wild. I'm taking up to tier three, going for that tip core as soon as possible. My idea here was uh, to upgrade tip core and go low eco and uh, try and win out through my units being more cost effective because they will be with the upgrades but it's a, a very tricky strategy to perform. I drop my chemical plant. Orca Strike comes in. No AP ammo just yet for Senna. He's had time to get it. That'll probably be upgraded any moment. I'm gonna use this Mantis just for scouting purposes. It's got a lot of health. Harvesters won't fire back at me because they're heavy harvesters. Now, you didn't see people put missiles in them. You did see me use the mutant marauders. That's effective. It wasn't a great one-click that, which I did because that field is almost depleted. So it's almost like I didn't even one-click him. I should have used the catalyst missile on his expansion rev. And you're going to see soon another change in R20, which I got plenty positive feedback from. I built a Reckoner because I had two Black Hand Squads, but upon seeing those Wolverines, of course, the Black Hand Squads are no more, so I can't make a Reckoner for them. I've got Tib Core, which is going to make these Hammerheads obsolete. Wolverines of Ape Camera are going to absolutely shred my bikes. I'm upgrading charged Particle Beams. I need that online. I'm in a bit of a pickle here because I've only got bikes, and those will get slaughtered against those. Wolverines. Only the Mantis can sustain some damage. That's why I'm moving that in first. Sure, turrets are being dropped. I'm hoping that he uses his um, Wolverines on the Shredder turrets while I kill his Wolverines. So I'm going to surgically attack some of these Wolverines. I need to be very careful. There's an MRT there as well. He must have made that by accident. But the DPS on the bikes is crazy. That hammerhead there is ripe for taking out. Still no expansion ref for me. The hammerhead does get taken out at the expense of that mantis, but the mantis paid for itself. It ranked up, it killed those orcas, it killed the hammerhead. And I should be able to deal with these wolverines with shredded turrets, though just for good measure I'll make a purifier as well. I split off my bikes, I've got two groups of them. I'm going to send these bikes to Senna's expansion, but instead I decided to cut off his reinforcements. These Wolverines are reinforcing to me. If I can take those out, then after I've killed this army, he'll have no more forces left. Harvest is now being destroyed. 
those bikes are being super annoying. Bikes deal splash damage, so make sure you don't kill your own forces. That's a risk with tip core bikes in some situations. And these bikes are causing problems. As you can see, I've got a unique rocket glow on my bikes. You can get this by downloading my 4K remaster mod. If you guys haven't already, then do check that out. That's why my game looks, looks quite a bit different. I never harvester falls. And that was what I needed to get myself back into this game after that one base attack. Senna has a, an expansion down in the south. I've got a purifier out, one or two purifiers. It's not a lot. Black Hand aren't known for their armor. Purifies is really the only thing you can build besides Scorpion tanks that can tank damage. I'm going to focus down these watchtowers because they deal significant damage to bikes. So I felt like it was worth targeting those downs down that first. I've got multiple groups of forces. And this tip core upgrade is really paying dividends now. The only upgrade I lack is the Purifying Flame, and in R20C, it's 500 off. So it only costs $2,500 to get Purifying Flame. It's worth it, in my opinion. Uh, the upgrade duration is the same. The reason for it was I didn't want to make Purifying Flame timing pushes more potent. Uh, it would have offset the nerf made to the flame tank because we wanted to tone down the early game uh, effectiveness of blue flames so we kept the upgrade duration the same anyways i want to showcase something here with the decoy temple of nod and that is you can now laser fence your decoy temple of nod this will make it look like a real temple of nod because usually one distinguishing factors between the black hand or the regular temple of nod and the decoy one was the fact that the decoy couldn't be uh, fenced so now everything is the same about it even the description in vanilla the description was formatted differently on the decoy temple of nod compared to the real one so all you had to do in vanilla was just um click on the enemy's temple of nod and just see if the description is formatted the same as the real one i can't believe ea made that mistake but they did and now I've taken it to another level we got fake times two so you can go for a fence and it does increase the armor I had several people saying to me it shouldn't increase the armor but I thought well why not it's $500 if you want to make it more armored then it's not a big deal <laughs> it's got barely any health to begin with purifying flame is researched and I've got this commando as well which by the way can target walkers such as this wolverine here Heroic Commandos can deal with the Wolverine, but only at point-blank range, otherwise the Commando might may get suppressed and killed. Now these Purifiers, they can stop and shoot with their lasers, but you know what? It's better to just move in with them and use the Purifying Flame. The laser of the Avatar is not as potent or as the Flamethrower, even against armored targets such as Titans. I'm moving into this force and the Purifiers are just taking out all of those titans with absolute ease. The commando still lives as well. Got some decoy purifiers over there as well. Those that may appear as real ones to him. It's difficult to control all these groups. Those purifiers are heavily damaged. I'm going to go and try and get them back to base for repairs. More of the power being destroyed. And these purifiers may have a difficult task in returning to base. That's the risk of building purifiers. If they are lost on the field, then they can be taken over by your opponent, but upgrades won't uh, carry over. So if you lose a purifying flame uh, purifier and your opponent doesn't have purifying flame research, then he'll only get the regular purifier without blue flame, which is kind of a big um, deal. I think that is a good thing because that just encourages you to build them as a black hand player because even if you have a regular purifier a blue flame purifier and your opponent has a normal one you can still win out that fight quite decisively 
I once again used my flamethrower on the purifier to win out that engagement and take out the titans and wolverines. I've got these purifiers scattered on the map. I've barely taken any Tiberium off of this big field in the south. As you can see, the map transitions into an industrial area as you get down to the bottom. It is quite a stark difference. And uh, Des has been experimenting a lot with map layouts, and this one here is pretty amazing. I like how it can turn into a completely different looking map in the bottom. I saw a bunch of titans flanking me from the bottom. There's some destructible ridges there. If those get destroyed, I'll have to use the gatehouse on them. Once again, I move in with the purifiers to make use of the flamethrower because the laser otherwise is pretty weak. I don't have the option to double beam up these. I built another commando, but uh, against these wolverines, it's not going to be enough. I thought there were just tines there. If they were just tines, then she would have a field day here, but uh, she is in danger, so I'm going to pull her back. Expensive unit. Commandos are $2,000. The screen ones cost uh, a bit more. And once again, I'm going to repeat what I did before, and I'm going to send these purifiers into the enemy walkers and use the flamethrower. Titans once more get destroyed. I'm going to split up one of these purifiers to take out the harvesters. I briefly saw one go to that original starting field. I built a Reckoner for my commando once more. I see Tiberium coming in for the second time. And that fake nuke may be forcing Senna to make some tough decisions because it appears as a normal one. That is fenced. We've got some bikes over here as well. I'm trying to find some more targets in the form of harvesters. There's one there full of Tiberium. I'm going to take this out. Bikes with Tipcore, incredibly powerful. Going for that one base uh, Tiberium Core missiles was a great idea, in my opinion. So I'm just managing my eco here. I still have not established any economy on my expansion. So the only thing I'm really doing wrong here is not establishing my eco as best as I could on that expansion. I've got these purifiers against Wolverines and Titans. I'm going to see if I can approach them with the flamethrower. A lot of players don't do this. They don't intentionally use their purifiers in the way that I'm using them here. That's why I wanted to demonstrate this game to you all because I feel like people are too quick to judge purifiers. They don't use them in the way that I feel that they're intended to be used, which is to just move them in. You're not supposed to use the laser on the avatar, maybe against targets such as the Marv when it's retreating and you can get into flamethrower range. But if you are able to approach the enemy with a flamethrower, then just do it like here. Look at this damage here. One purifier and all of the Wolverines fell pretty much instantly. And that is even a veteran purifier as well. So I'm making great use of purifiers. Uh, it's a $2,800 unit. It did receive a small cost reduction in R18, I believe it was. It was, it was years ago that it got a cost reduction. But that did make it a more viable unit. It's still uh, hard to uh, rank up and promote. But I think if you use them in the way that I'm using them, it's way more possible to get things such as a heroic purifier. Obviously this commando has no chance of escaping there, so I'm going to go ahead and see if I can target this titan before it dies. There's a um, team color on that purifier husk. That's another change in R20. So lots of changes appearing here. And now you can see I've placed my real Temple of Nod for the anti-EMP ability. The Temple of Nod has an ability which can negate uh, Shockwave or EMP. I did hotkey that. Um, I at one point intended to put that ability on the sidebar, but uh, then I discovered it, it'd be better for gameplay reasons to not do that. It's just more accessible having it where it is. As I mentioned in a previous video. So once again another attack coming in. 
I've got my Redeemer, which has a flamethrower effects on it now, a new one. Also has some distortion like the Purifier does. But I think these little details um, add up. I think it's a, an improvement. Fortunately for Senna, I already used my Tiv Vein. I've got these units here. I don't really need to respond with my whole army. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to send my army to the other side. I may have just split one off there. The Elite Purifier probably is going to him. That was destroyed, unfortunately. So that was an Elite Purifier that got taken out. And another one is going to be destroyed in the top. So, yeah, this is actually not too good for me at this point. I, I was in a great position, but now I'm just bleeding forces. I've also got a full... Blue Tyburn, the green Tyburn field in the south, which is nice. I can still be cost effective considering that he does not have uh, railguns. Not that you would ever expect to see railguns against Black Hand because whoever spams purifiers, that's the thing. It's usually just infantry and a redeemer. You may see behemoths, but I'm quite frankly not uh, too thrilled about behemoths on a map like this. I think that they are very easily taken out on a large open map such as this. But it's great for sieging the enemy base. Uh, they would be good for sieging my base here, but against those purifiers wandering across the map, they're, they're not particularly useful. I've got a purifier there. I'm going to start focusing on that refinery and maybe even get the MCV. Look at the DPS on the purifier. And the Redeemer even benefits from Purifying Flame in R20. Much as I did with the Purify, this Redeemer will be sent forward to showcase its beautiful flame. And it, the DPS increase of the Redeemer is only 30%. So it feels just right. It's not broken or anything. That was to compensate for the fact that the Flame Tank got a sizable nerf. And I didn't want to... Uh, change the upgrade cost or duration at the time. Uh, we found in early R20 testing that the $3,000 cost was still a bit too high considering the flame tank nerf that was made or rather fixed because it was bugged. But yeah, here comes this Purify which is elite. Maybe if I kill a refinery it will promote to that heroic status. Something that you rarely see from a purifier, so I'm going to focus on this war factory, and there you see it, guys, and a heroic purifier. So this is the second purifier that had the chance to go heroic. This one did make it. He is focusing on these titans. Three more to go, but it's not going to be enough. Ideally, I should have moved in and used the purifying flame. That probably would have dealt with all the titans, and the purifier would have lived. But yeah, how often do you see that? The answer is not to all that often. And I thought that was a pretty interesting game, showcasing uh, some strategies early on and then later on with that type room, with that purifying flame on the purifiers. So that's going to be it, and I hope you all enjoyed these two games, guys. I uh, hope you all enjoyed the update, the patch, the ranked mode that has made it to Kane's Draft once more. I uh, hope you all enjoyed this video again so yeah this is gonna be me master leaf and uh before i leave i'd like to give a big thank you to all of my patreon supporters who have been continuing to support me and my channel the patch the game um, all of that stuff without you guys it would not have been possible and a big thank you to everyone else who has been watching my channel and uh liking my videos commenting on them i really appreciate that as well so this is gonna be me master leaf peace out